Hi again, Mike Mazzalongo, BibleTalk.tv, answering your questions. Uh, one question that came uh, based on uh, our previous uh, episode, uh, what makes a home church a church? In other words, what is it about a house church that makes it a legitimate church? I think that's a pretty good question. Uh, another question similar to that one uh, was, what difference is there uh, between just a home Bible study group and a house church, are they exactly the same thing? And the answer to that is no, they're not exactly the same thing. And Paul makes uh, the distinction in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. That's where we really find the answer to this. And I'd like to read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, uh, verse 23. And in this passage, he's talking, he's really talking about uh, the use of gifts uh, when the church gathers together, but th there are a few lines that I'd like to um, uh, focus on to explain this issue here that we're talking about. So we begin in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, verse 23. So Paul says, Therefore, if the whole church assembles, there's the key, if the whole church assembles, all right? He goes on to say, If the whole church assembles together, and all speak in tongues, and ungifted men or unbelievers enter, will they not say that you are mad? But if all prophesy, and an unbeliever or an ungifted man enters, he is convicted by all, and uh, he is called to account by all. The secrets of his heart are disclosed, and so he will fall on his face and worship God, declaring that God is certainly among you. What is the outcome then, brethren, when you assemble? Each one has a psalm, each has a teaching, has a revelation, each has a tongue, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for edification. Again, here he's talking about various spiritual gifts that they had in the first century and how to properly use them. But I want you to note that he uh, makes a distinction. He says, when you assemble, in other words, when you gather together uh, as a church, and so uh, this, is, uh, this is the focus of our, uh, of our particular uh, study today. Um, he makes a distinction about meetings. And there was a specific agenda for the meeting when the brethren gathered as the church. And the difference is, if you were uh, wondering, if I'm ever getting to the point, what's the difference between, you know, we're having a Bible study over here and uh, uh, this meeting here is the church. The difference is intention. What is your intention for the meeting? Uh, when the believers gather as the church, it is to do certain things given to the church to do when it gathers. That's when it becomes the church. In Acts uh, chapter 2, uh, uh, verse uh, 37 to 42, um, gives us a description of this intention and these activities. And I want to read that for you. Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 37. Um, this is where Peter is preaching uh, on Pentecost Sunday, very first gospel sermon. And people respond to his, um, to his uh, sermon. And uh, we see what happens afterwards. So we begin, we pick up the action, verse 37. It says, now when they, meaning the crowd, when they heard this, uh, the this being the gospel message, now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do to be saved? And Peter said to them, repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. And with many other words, he solemnly testified and he kept on exhorting them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. So then, those who had received his word were baptized. And that day, there were added about 3,000 souls. So, okay, there's the first step. He's preaching the gospel. People respond to the gospel by believing in Jesus and being, uh, being baptized. But verse 42 is the key here. It says in verse 42, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to a fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. So they became Christians and what did they do at that point? Well, they did specific things. 
Uh, they were taught by the apostles, obviously the teachings of Jesus. They enjoyed fellowship uh, together as fellow believers. Uh, they broke bread, meaning they took the communion, the Lord's uh, Supper, uh, and they prayed and, and worshiped. And if you scroll down to uh, verse uh, 44, it says, and all those who had believed were together and had all things in common, and they began selling their property and possessions and we're sharing them with all as anyone might have need. So there's the other activity of this uh, newly founded church, and that was uh, taking care of the needs of individuals. So uh, let's say 15 believers uh, gather at your house uh, for your birthday, and they eat cake, and obviously they say a prayer of thanks, uh, and they celebrate and they're happy. What is that? Well, that's a birthday party. You know, that's not church, even though you've got 15 believers gathering in the, in the same place. However, these same 15 people gathering on the Lord's Day, on Sunday, with the specific intention to take the communion, to have fellowship, to study God's word, to enjoy fellowship, and to see to various needs, this then is a church meeting. This is the church meeting with intention. Same 15 people, same house, same group kind of coming together at the same place. The difference is the intention. The intention of these 15 believers on the Lord's Day is that they're coming together as the church in order to do the things that the church is supposed to be doing, uh, giving, uh, given to them uh, by Christ. One last thing I wanna mention uh, today uh, these Christians that I'm talking about, they, they can meet as the church to only study the Bible if, they want, uh, if that's what they want to do, or only have fellowship on a Tuesday night or on a Monday afternoon, but they do so intentionally as the church. What makes you a church or a congregation, uh, which is part of the worldwide body of Christ, is twofold. Number one, people who have become Christians according to Jesus' command. And number two, these individuals decide to gather intentionally as the church for the purpose of worship and service in the name of Christ. These are the two basic things necessary to form and function as a church. Now, of course, there are more details uh, to this, and uh, we'll try to cover uh, the details and the questions that you send in uh, in the next session. So that's it for now. Thank you very much. Uh, keep uh, tuning in. Keep watching BibleTalk.tv. We have over a thousand videos, 50 different series, all kinds of uh, uh, resource material, all, all free uh, to use and to download and to distribute. So please uh, use uh, the material that we put out there. And uh, we'll see you next time with another Dear Mike uh, episode. Bye-bye.